Okay, let's face it. We bought these little nano VNAs primarily for one purpose, and that is to check our antennas and check our SWR and such as that. But in the infinite wisdom of the manufacturer, when it comes to us, this is what the screen normally looks like, something like this. Talking about information overload, it's really something that we have to struggle with, but there are easy fixes. Let's see what we have to do to get this to display our SWR, our resistance, and nothing else. It's really not that difficult. If you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, ask a question, and subscribe. Also, there's a link to if you want to donate to the channel. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. It helps me to produce more videos and buy any equipment or supplies I need in order to build the antennas or to do the testing. So let's get on with it. As the nano VNA comes from the factory, it's got four different traces turned on. All we want to do is to measure SWR and measure resistance of our antennas. As I said, we've got information overload. It doesn't mean a lot to us right now. And I'm going to go through how to turn off all these traces and then reconfigure it to the traces that we do want. Let's click on the menu where it's got display marker. Stimulus, think of stimulus as a uh, signal generator. What signal is being generated? Calibrate is how we calibrate the device to make sure it's, it's accurate. Recall is after, after we've done calibration and stored the calibrations in the memory. The recall lets us recall those where we don't have to do the calibration each time. So let's go to display. Click on display and it brings up trace. This is a very powerful device, but most of us just want to use some basics and, and get some initial measurements, test measurements on our antennas. So let's go to trace, click on trace, and here we've got the color codings again for each of them. So let's tap on that one. We tar we've turned off the yellow one. The yellow one has disappeared. It's no longer here. It's no longer up here either. We'll do the same thing for trace one, trace two, trace three. So now we've got a blank screen. That's a little too blank, so we need to add something back. So let's let's go back to the menu and go to trace zero. You see we've got it turned on here and it's still defaulting to log mag. So let's go back and go to format. And you see this is where the log mag is selected. So let's turn off log mag and go to SWR. So now we've got SWR selected and we'll go back. Let's go to another trace, trace one. And trace one is still defaulting to the factory configuration of the second channel in log mag. So let's, we've got it selected. We want resistance. So now we've got resistance selected. You can see where it says S11R and 100 ohms is a full scale for this now. So let's go back and we'll tap on the screen and get rid of our menu. So the Nano VNA comes with these cables. You can see here and I've got the double male connector in the end of the cable. This allows us to connect our calibration pieces to this. And the thing about th this unit is it calibrates to wherever the end is. If you don't have the cable on here, it calibrates to this end here. So as long as you connect your antennas or, or whatever you're measuring at this point without adding an extra cable, your calibration is good. But if you change anything by adding a cable, your calibration is no longer accurate and you would need to recalibrate. What I would suggest to prevent wearing out your connectors here on, on the Nano VNA. Always use the cable. 
It also provides more flexibility in positioning the Nano VNA, and it just provides more flexibility in connections. So always leave these connected, and I calibrate to this point here, and that's where we'll put our different test connectors in order to do the calibration. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so right now we don't have any of the test connectors on there. We've got our cable connected that's gonna always remain here. This is what we're gonna calibrate with this on. So that means we need to take all of our measurements with that connected also. So let, let's go through the calibration. We need to change our frequency. So we go into the menu and here we've got the stimulus. Again, the stimulus is basically the, the signal generator. So we're gonna click on that and click on start brings up this keypad and we want to start around seven megahertz. So we'll click on seven and then M for megahertz. And that's going to change our start frequency here to seven megahertz. But our stop frequency is still at 900 megahertz. So we're going to go to stop frequency and we're going to put in 30 megahertz. So now we've got a very flat SWR and the resistance is saying is 51.27 ohms. Our yellow trace is our SWR and is saying we've got a 1.029 into that 50 ohm resistance. So that, that's extremely close to one to one. So that, that's gonna work for us in this test. This is our calibration. So now we've got calibrated for seven and 30 megahertz. Let's store that somewhere. So we'll go back Going to calibrate, click on save. You notice all of these memory locations are empty. Well, whatever you put into location zero is what comes up automatically when you turn the power on. So we're gonna use this wideband calibration here in the location zero. And now, now it's stored. So we can turn off the power, turn it back on, and there it is. We've got seven megahertz to 30 megahertz with SWR and resistance. So that, that's how you set it, set it up. One setting we wanna make sure is configured properly is the number of sweep points. In other words, between the frequency here, you start and end frequency, how many slices is it gonna break it up into to test it? I believe when this thing comes from the factory, it's only slicing it up into 101 points. It has the capability of going up to 401 points. So let's go and check that. So let's go into stimulus and you'll see here sweet points. I believe when this is received, it was only set up to 101 points. It may be in 401, but all you have to do is come here and click on it and now you've just increased your resolution four times going from 101 to 401. So it's slicing that frequency band, whatever you have selected here, into that many different slices. So the more slices you have, the smoother your curve will be in your, in your results measurements. So we've got that at 401, and we've got the seven megahertz to 30 megahertz, which is 40 meters to 10 meter band sweep. Of course, this is just what I've selected. If you want to get down into the 80 and 160 meter bands, that's fine. So it's up to you as to how you set this up, but I'm setting mine up for 40 to 10. So let's, let's go now and let's calibrate for the other bands. So our start frequency for 40 meters is already there. So let's, let's put in our stop frequency. That'll be 7.3. So it goes 7.3 and we select M for megahertz. The G is for gigahertz, M is for megahertz, K is for kilohertz. Or we can just do it times one. That's getting, getting down into hertz. 
but we'll be selecting megahertz. So now our start is seven, our stop is 7.3. So it's going to slice it up into 401 slices. So let's go ahead and now go back to calibrate. Let's click calibrate. Now we've got to go to the open, short, and load. Here, here is the open without the pin. We'll put that on there. And now let's click open. And done. You see it's got the check mark, the line went across, and the indicator over here that we started the calibration process. So now it's ready to do the short. Find the short where it's all the same color on the inside there with the pin. So it's shorting the pin to the shield. And then we click on short. There. So now it shows open and short have been tested. We've got the check marks over here as well. So now we'll, we'll put on the load. So now we've got the load in place. Click on load to start. The blue line went across the top there. And now we've got all three of them here showing that they've been tested as well as the check marks here. So let's, let's click done and we will put that into memory slot one. So let's, let's click on empty one. Now, if we go back and pull up recall, you can see we've got the seven to 30 and the seven to 7.3 in the different memory configurations. So let's, let's turn that off. We've got it turned off. We'll turn it on. And it defaults to what's in memory slot zero. So we've got seven to 30. If we want to change it to memory slot one, go over here and click on that and it loads that. So now we're ready to test there. Okay, since we've selected memory slot one, which is the seven to 7.3, why don't we test an antenna? I've got my coax here. I'm gonna put the adapter on it to go from PL259 down to an SMA connector. Okay, so here we are. Our first SWR measurement, and this is for my 40 meter delta loop. You can see it's relatively flat. Again, the scale here is 0.25 SWR per graduation. So what have we got here? Well, at the high end here at 7.3 megahertz, and you see the little yellow marker here, little markers, you got a yellow one and a blue one. The measurements here reflect the readings wherever these markers are located. So we're at 7.3, which is verified by this right here. This is telling us marker one is at 7.3 megahertz. And at 7.3 megahertz, a little over 66 ohms and 1.54 SWR. You can see this, this line here is 1.25. This line here is 1.5 and we're a little bit above the second line. So that's 1.54 SWR. So we can move these markers either with the little wheel up here like that by hold, holding it over and it'll move, or you can click on it and drag it which is kind of handy. Sometimes a little faster, depending on how you want to do that. But right here, basically our lowest SWR, you can see up there the, the reading change as I drag it, but you can find your lowest S SWR, which is around 1.225, 1.224. So that, that's a good workable SWR. And our high point down here, at seven megahertz, I didn't get it all the way over evidently, there's seven megahertz, is 1.399 or 1.4 SWR. And I'll show one, one more 
of the calibration steps. So let, let's go up to the 20 meter band and calibrate there. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you start the calibration process is you need to set the frequencies you want to calibrate to. So let's click on the menu and go to stimulus. You can equate that to a signal generator or the frequencies, whatever you want to call it, and then click on start. Well, 20 meters is from 14 to 14,350 for the entire band. So we'll go to 14 megahertz, and that's our start frequency and it even says down here CW and let's let's set the high side now which is the stop frequency and that'll be 14350 so 14.350 megahertz okay so now we got 14 to 14350 and here we're going to go through the same calibration steps as we did for 40 meter band so let's click on the menu go back go to calibrate and click on calibrate now it wants our open that's the one that does not have the pin in the center and we'll put that on and then we'll click on open and it's through it has put the check mark in it's also indicated over here that the open, the red O, has been calibrated. So we remove the open, put on the short. Again, it's where it's the same color. Got the metal on metal with a pin in the center, where it's connecting the center conductor to the shield. So we'll click on short. and short is completed and it also shows it over here. Remove the short and put on the load. This is the 50 ohm. Again, it's got the pin in the center. You can see the white plastic insulation between the pin and the shield. And we'll click on load here and it should calibrate the load. So there we are. Load is calibrated. We've got it here, OS, and I believe that's a D for load. And now we're done. Now we want to save that in the empty spot two. So now we should have that saved. Go back in the menu. We'll go to recall. And we see... We've got the 7 to 30, we've got the 7 to 7.3, now we've got the 14 to 14.35, which has a check mark beside it, which indicates that's the one that is currently selected. So that's the steps you go through. You just repeat those steps for each band that you want to store. Make sure to save it after each one, like we just did. And that's how, how you can get the simple readings for your SWR and your resistance for your antennas. For most of us out there that are using these as an antenna analyzer and such, that's how you set it up. Just a few steps, not that difficult, and hopefully this is helpful. If you've learned anything, if you like what you saw, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to get the videos out in front of more people. Also, if you like what you saw and want to help support the channel, we have a link where you can buy me a coffee and make a contribution to help to expand the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. This is Kilo Mike 4, Zulu Kilo Bravo. Have a blessed day.